Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to this morning's worship here at First Presbyterian Church in Hot Springs. It is a joy to see you here this morning as we gather to worship God. Somewhere along these two aisles, you'll find our red ritual of friendship pads, and I encourage you to pick those up, pass them down, filling out information as you go. As it comes back, take note of who you are sharing a pew with this morning so that you can greet them by name as you leave worship today. There are a lot of announcements today, so you might just want to get comfy. Um, so Tammy gave me the bulletin to proof this week, and she included this poinsettia order form, and I told her to take it back, that there was no way it was time to sign up for poinsettias yet, and she reminded me that no, it really is time to start talking about poinsettias. So, because Tammy is right and I am wrong, it's poinsettia time. Um, so your um, form for the fill out for poinsettias is in the bulletin. Make sure that you take note of that. During our worship, during the offering today, we will um, we will dedicate our pledges for the year. Um, I've seen I've seen these in some pockets. So if you brought your pledge card this morning, that's fantastic. If you forgot your pledge card this morning and would like to grab a blank one, they're going to be just sitting right over here, and you can sneak down and grab one, and then you'll have it to fill out. If you don't have your pledge card this morning, fear not. You can always mail it to the office, or you can bring it by the office or you can call one of us and we'll come to you and get your pledge card. We will make that work. Um, but do remember that that will happen this morning. This afternoon at 3 o'clock, we have our Halloween party. Uh, we are excited to pick this tra um, tradition up again. We will be at the Leonard's. Um, the address is 118 Shore Acres Drive. That's off of Thornton Ferry, close to the McDonald's. Um, but if you put that address in your, um, in your phone or in your GPS, it will get you right there. So 3 o'clock, we look forward to seeing everyone there. Um, we have picture-perfect weather today. Um, so make, make your way there and enjoy some fun and fellowship and a little good food um, and maybe some costumes. You never know, um, but it will, be, it will be a good time. A reminder, this Wednesday is a fifth Wednesday, which means, PW ladies, we will head out. Um, we're going to Purple Cow. We have our own room in the back, so we can be as rowdy as we need to be at Purple Cow on Wednesday night. Um, if you have signed up on the sign-up board, fantastic. If you have not, make your way after church today and sign up on the board, and we will look forward to that. Next Sunday is our first Sunday in November, um, which means it is All Saints Sunday. If, um, if there is someone that you want to make sure is included in our All Saints Remembrance, um, contact Kathy this week in the office and make sure that we have all of the names of the loved ones to be remembered next Sunday. And if you are just particularly kind, you could just stop by and ask Tammy to look at the list and, and take a look. She is excellent at making sure we don't miss anyone. Um, but the more eyes on that, the better. My guess is if I took a survey in here as to who right now is a little on the warm side and who in right now is a little on the cool side, we might have equal numbers. Um, it is hard to get the sanctuary to a temperature that works for everyone. But our deacons have thought about that problem. In the narthex now where the coat rack is, there are shawls hanging on the hangers in the coat rack. So if you are chilly in worship, Head back, grab one of those shawls. There are lightweight ones. There are heavier ones. They are ready for you. There's a basket underneath. So when you are done with your shawl after worship, just drop it in that basket. It will be washed and ready for someone to um, pick up next week. So do not let, um, do not sit and shiver in worship. We may be called the frozen cho chosen, but we do not want anyone to freeze. Um, so if you do feel um, chilly in worship, feel free to make your way um, back to the narthex and grab a shawl to keep you warm. That was a lot of announcements. I think that's all of my announcements. Are there announcements that are known to the body that I have missed? Well then friends, let us take this time to prepare our hearts as we begin to worship God.
Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call for worship responsibly as noted in your bulletin. Surely God is in this place. And calls us to worship in spirit and in truth. Surely God is in this place. Receiving our songs and praise. Surely God is in this place. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, whom no dwelling can contain, in this house we gather to call upon your mercy, to thank you for your goodness, and to praise your name forever. In this hour of worship, help us to become who we are meant to be, a community that breathes thankfulness, voicing your praise in all we do. Amen. Amen. of silence. Let us pray. Merciful God, you call us to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. But often we ignore that wisdom. Instead of listening, we talk past one another. Instead of exercising patience, we become hot-headed and irritable. 
instead of practicing kindness, we hand out judgment and malice. Help us rid ourselves of wickedness and embrace steadfast love in its place. Forgive us of our sins, so that when we look in your mirror, we see the disciples you are calling us to be. Amen. Friends, hear and believe the good news. Who is it who is in a position to condemn? Who is it who stands in a place where they can judge? It is only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone, and a new life has begun. Friends, know that we indeed are forgiven, and be at peace. Let us pray. Loving God, you promised in the scriptures that your word will, will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. May it be so today. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from 1 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, page 307 in your pew Bible. Now King Hiram of Tyre sent his servants to Solomon when he heard that they had anointed him king in the place of his father. For Hiram had always been a friend to David. Solomon sent word to Hiram, saying, You know that my father David could not build a house for the name of the Lord, his God, because of the warfare with which his enemies surrounded him, until he put them under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor misfortune. So I intend to build a house for the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord said to my father David, Your son, whom I will set on your throne in your place, shall build the house for my name. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
What a gift of music we have each Sunday. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture reading comes from a few chapters later in 1 Kings. The temple now has been built and the time has come to dedicate it. So we read from 1 Kings chapter 8 verses 1 through 13. Listen this morning for God's word to you. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the ancestral homes of the Israelites, before King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. All the people assembled to King Solomon at the festival in the month of Ephium, which is the seventh month. All of the elders of Israel came, and the priests carried the ark. So they brought up the ark of the Lord, the tent of meeting, and all the holy vessels were in the tent. The priests and the Levites brought them up. King Solomon and all of the congregation of Israel who had assembled before them were with him in the ark, before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be counted or numbered. Then the priests brought the ark of the covenant to the, of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the ark. So the cherubim made a covering above the ark and its poles. The poles were so long that the end of the poles were seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from the outside. They are there to this day. There was nothing in the ark except for the two tablets of stone that Moses had placed there at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites when they came out of the land of Egypt. And when the priests came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord. So the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said he will dwell in thick darkness. I have built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell forever. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Anyone who has handled a construction project can tell you, but construction always takes longer than you think it's going to. A contractor died in a fishing accident on his 42nd birthday and found himself greeted at the pearly gates by a brass band. St. Peter ran over, shook his hand, said, congratulations. Well, congratulations for what, the contractor said. For what, St. Peter said, we are celebrating the fact that you live to be 162 years old. But that's not true, the contractor said. I, I only live to be 43. Huh, said St. Peter. We added up your timesheets. <laughs> Before the temple of the Lord was built, 
The people had the tabernacle of God, the holy tent in which God essentially camped out with the ancient Israelites on their way through the wilderness between Egypt and Canaan. So important was it to their theology that God moved around like this in this God tent that it created a dilemma when King Solomon finally completed construction on the temple years later. That's where we picked up our reading this morning in 1 Kings 8. If you'll remember, if you were with us last Sunday, David decided he wanted to build a temple to the Lord. And we heard God answer with a holy, no, not yet, David, not now, and even not you. I don't need a permanent house quite yet, God said to David. I have not lived in a house since the day I brought the people of Israel from Egypt to this day but instead have been moving around in tents and in a tabernacle. But David's son Solomon finally got the green light. And if you look back at the chapters preceding our text today, you would read the temple's impressive scale, quarried with the stones from which it was constructed, walls entirely lined with elaborate carvings out of cedar overlaid with pure gold. You'd read about elegant, elegant sculptures and vessels and furnishings of the temple, many of them gold and jeweled as well. The temple, rather than the tabernacle, would be what Jonathan Alter calls a terrestrial communication center for speaking with God. And what a fancy communication center it turned out to be. The theology was clear. And they wanted to make sure that people knew God with this new temple had not gotten stuck. God was still on the move with them always. And yet now God had a home base, some place to be, feel safe, a place the people could come and feel God's presence each and every week. Anywhere God is, is holy, the people knew, which meant everywhere is holy. So the people had believed for so many years, it doesn't matter where we worship, because wherever we worship, God is with us. Which is true, and also a little false. Because there is something about a sanctuary. Stop and look around at the place where we sit this morning, the beauty of this space built entirely to make us think more, think deeply about our God. A place that speaks to us of God's transcendence, of God's otherness, of God's mystery. It has been, as it always has been, the place where we come to worship, where we come to experience our God. It was always where worship happened, until it wasn't. In 2020, COVID-19 sent everyone to their homes instead. We had, as a community, in terms of our story, been a temple church for a long time, always coming to this one place to worship that was set up with our worship needs. But all of a sudden, as people, we were sent back to our tents, the tabernacle of our screens, the only thing connecting us when it came time to worship. And we did worship. I know you did. I've seen the videos of that holy time. And worship indeed happened, but let's be honest, it was not the same. So if with Solomon, our question for this day is, does it really matter where we come to worship our God? 
our truthful answer has to be no not really and heck yeah it does all at the same time so many of us though long for the days to get back to the way things were before covid interrupted our lives but i think we might be missing out a little on the lessons god has for us because we are lucky enough now to understand both the power of the tabernacle and the power of the temple we know god forever on the move with us wherever we are even if it's not exactly where we want to be not tied down to a single place ready to meet us where we are and we know god forever in the holy sanctuary a place set aside where we can know that we can always come and feel a little closer to god's holy presence so maybe maybe we got to experience a little bit of the best of both worlds now you'll notice that our readings today skip a little bit from where we started in 1 Kings to where we ended. The lectionary passages often do as we're trying to make our way through the story. We skip straight from the announcement of building the temple to its dedication. Anyone who has built a new house would love to have that power in their own lives to skip straight from the idea of getting started to being done and moving in. But the details that come between help tell our story. We learn in these intervening verses that Solomon instates an immense work gang, as the CEB translates it, to carry out the labor to build the temple. The word that is used for this workforce in the Hebrew moss only shows up, only else shows up in the description of how the Israelites were treated in Egypt where the brutal pharaoh and his taskmaker, taskmasters made them work without any pay. The treatment of the people of Israel and Egypt were the reason that they had left in the first place, and yet that same type of work was required again as the people struggled to build the temple. It was all for God, Solomon proclaimed, as he undertook practices that once led God to send locusts and frogs and deaths and to split the sea in two. The people, though, weren't so sure. And we see that shortly after Solomon's death, the nation splits into two. The fractures that came during this time couldn't ultimately be healed. We also learn about the differences in time that it took Solomon to build the temple versus how long it took him to build his own palace. The narrator here is typically concise, noting almost in passing that the temple took seven years to build while the palace took 13, without commenting on the discrepancy the years, the numbers, stand for themselves. Almost twice as long they spent building the palace to hold the king than the temple that would hold the presence of God. What Solomon wanted to do, what Solomon set out to do, we know is to build a house worthy of God. A place for the community to gather, to share in God's presence, to hear God's call on them. But in the process, he forgot something. He forgot that he was building for God and not for himself. 
And so to remind himself, to remind the people, maybe even to remind our God, they gathered to dedicate the temple. There was pomp and there was circumstance, but there was also an honest pledge. I have built you a house, O oh God, Solomon says. I have built you an exalted house. It is yours today. It is yours tomorrow. It is yours forever. He said it in front of the people so that when he forgot, they could help him remember. And friends, we are dedicating a little ourselves today too. We are dedicating our pledges, our promises, our intentions to give financially to the church in the year that is to come. We do this in worship because it is an act of worship, a sign of our gratitude, a response to all that God has done for us. And so after the ushers get past passing the plates, you will be invited to come down and bring your offering, bring your pledge card to the table yourself. We do this to remind ourselves. We do this to remind each other. And we even do this to remind our God that we have a plan. A plan for God to build a great church. Maybe not one inlaid with gold and with rubies like Solomon, but maybe one that's even better. One that maybe is decorated by sticky fingerprints of the children who call it home. One that is filled with the sounds of laughter that bubble over between members. One whose strong foundation is prayer and is study, and then on that foundation reaches out to all of those in the community, all of those in the world who are in need. This is your place, God. And we promise, today we promise, we will do our part to take care of it. And so today we remember Solomon, who built God an incredible house. And we remember the people who wandered in the wilderness and who met God in their tents. Today we remember those who came before us in this congregation, who kept fighting for the future that we enjoy. And we remember those who will come after us, for whom we carry a responsibility as well. Today we remember our community, all of those whose lives are touched, whose lives will be touched by the mission and ministry of First Presbyterian Church in Hot Springs. But mostly friends, today we remember our God. Our God who was with us in tents, and is with us in the temple, who is with us now in the sanctuary and even in the living rooms watching from home. And we know, we trust, we believe, we pray that whatever our tomorrow brings, God will be there too. Amen.
join me in saying what it is as Christians we truly believe. Using the words of the Apostles' Creed, you'll find printed in the bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As our pastor noted today, we give our offerings to God as usual, but we will also offer our pledges to God for the year to come. The plate will be passed so that we might ta all take part in the mission and ministry of the church today. Please don't put your pledge cards in them. After the ushers take up the offering, make your way to the communion table and leave your pledge card there. If you need a little help getting it forward, just raise it in the air and someone will pick it up and bring it on their way. Let us present our gifts and, and pledges to our God. The ushers will now come forward to accept the offering.
Please join me in the litany of dedication as noted in your bulletin. Receive these gifts, O God. We offer to you, O God, these gifts and humble thanks for the love you give to us. Accept these pledges, O God. We offer to you, O God, these pledges and gratitude for your promises to us. Renew our commitment, O God. We offer to you, O God, our lives, our time, our talents, and our gifts, and grateful thanks for all that you are. Let us be surprised this year. May our eyes, our minds, and our hearts be opened this year. May we be surprised in our lives, in our church, and in our ministry together. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Friends, will you join your hearts with me in prayer? Loving God, you have created us to live as one body. And we thank you for calling us to belong to something so much bigger than ourselves. As we worship you in the sanctuary, as we leave this place to worship in our work, in our fellowship, in our school, in our leisure, we pray for the grace to live together in harmony. We pray for the imagination to find ways to strengthen our unity in Christ. We pray for the courage to carry out our commitments to you in a spirit of joy. God of our daily lives, we pause to think about others and to ask your blessing on all the people of the world. Those who work and those without. Those who are homeless and those who are well housed. Those who are fulfilled and those who are frustrated. Those who are cluttered with material goods and those who are scraping a living from what others leave behind. Those who are mourning and those who are dancing. We pray for all of our siblings, O oh God, that your blessings might multiply their joys and ease their worries and that we might share with them in their suffering and in their hope. As we face a new season, O oh God, help us to believe in new beginnings. When there was nothing, you spoke and the world was. Help us to believe in the power of your words. Help us to listen to your call. Help us to trust in you. Help us to allow you to remake us into people who live the life we are called to with the passion that we are shown in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We pray this and so much more in the strong name of Jesus, who is our shelter and is our strength, and who taught his disciples when praying together to say, Our Father, our Father who, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
here today in the long line of those who have come before us offering our gifts, offering our time, offering our work to God. And we worship a God who can take our brokenness, can take even when we mess up in the way that we give and transform it into God's holy church. And so we go out into the world today, out to the Fellowship Hall to get some cookies and some punch, out to the Leonards for some celebration and some fellowship this afternoon, carrying with us a little bit of what God intends for us as we serve as God's tabernacles, carrying his spirit into the world. We do not do this alone, for we go as we do each and every Sunday, knowing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen.